Fabrili about the Dzogchen. Generally, we all, you all, practitioners of the Dzogchen, so you already know quite the Dzogchen teaching intellectually. I'm not saying that we all got the realization. We all have some degree of the understanding and the knowledge of the intellectual level of Dzogchen teaching. So again, I talk a little bit today on that level. And then the, the most important ones we understand about the Dzogchen teaching or the general, all Buddha teaching, they need to practice practicing and to bring the result on that. That is really the most important. Knowing is so important, of course, but then the practice is so important. Now, in the, it's here. Here, in the highlight, in the highlight of the, 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 the teaching of this, this here, here, and the explaining of the Dzogchen's own uh, in unmistakable, mistakably explaining of the Dzogchen. Zoki path. That's the really teaching says. So what is that here? Say that if I read this uh, translated one, like the expense of the Rupa, the actualization of the insight and the primordial wisdom. Is the Buddha summoned Bhadra free from abandonment and attainment? And it is the great completion of the essential nature of the of all the uh, all paths of the samsara and the nirvana. Therefore it is it is known as the path great completions. So those are in mentioned in the back here, here. So now it, it says that expense of the you know, Rupa at the beginning, huh? the expense of the Rupa, the actualization in sight primordial wisdoms. So that is the, this is the, how now we're going to actualize this? How to discover? Generally, again, as we I mentioned, the other, last uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, we've been talking about the, the Dzogchi, the nine yanas. We went one after another, another different level of the yanas. So if we talk that same way, if I talk that same way, first is, what is nature of the Dzogchi? What is nature of the Dzogchi? Nature of the Dzogchi is primordial in it wisdom, origin in it inherited one's own, within the, our own self. All primordial wisdom of the clear light and luminous, luminosity which is residing within the every single living being in their heart center or in their nature. That is the, the nature of the Dzogchi, the primordial wisdom. And what is the Dzogchi teaching? That Dzogchi teaching is the instruction how to discover that in it the primordial clear light luminosity nature, nature without effort, without effort, effort and activity, discovering that nature. That is Zokchi teaching. Zokchi teaching, so now I really explain Zokchi nature of the Zokchi and the teaching of the Zokchi. Zokchi teaching is that to discover our innate nature, nature of the primordial wisdom, clear light and luminosity state, to discover that. That we all have. That has different names and different yana. And as I we went or they did, yeah, different has everyone trying to find that truth, truth, and has all the different interpretations they had that and also different names within the Buddhist. But reality, nature is one, there's not many nature. Same nature, same nature. The nature, what this nature is, is clay, unimpeded, luminosity, nature. How to discover that? And again, all the different schools, the Yana is explained in so many different ways. And all those te teachings and instructions are so powerful, so spiritual. But however, a core in point with the Dzogchen, when you look at is all mentally created, mind. So that means all is effort, all is activity. It is the activity of the subject and object <coughs> and the actions. Activity is all fabrication. The fabrication, according to the Dzogchen teaching, Fabrication activity will not discover unfabricated nature of the truth. Will not discover. 
nature of the is uh, un nature is unperfected, ordinary, primordial wisdom, uncompounded, enlightened, clear light, luminous state. To discover that nature exactly as it is, you have to do similar, similar way as is natural. For that reason, Dzogchi technique, teaching tells beyond effort, any activity, natural discovery. And so that is really about the nature and meaning of the, I mean, uh, the Dzogchi teaching. Then, in the Dzogchi teaching has a different names. Dzogchi has a different name. The Dzogchi is a very old. In the Sanskrit, according to many great masters, what is it called? Mahasindhi, Sandhi ahead. That means Maha is a great, great, and Sandhi means completion, Sindhi. And the Dzogchi has another different name, and called Ati Yoga, Ati Yoga. And Ati means ultimate. Yoga means the same as natural. So ultimate yoga. That means old yoga we translate, I mean yoga meaning, of course, it's very popular word in English too, yoga, but if yoga, what means yoga? It's natural. Well, yoga means natural. So ultimate nature. There's a, that means, that indicates there's nothing higher, better, deeper, more accurate, more correct nature than discovering our innate nature of the mind. That means Ati Yoga, Ati, Supreme, Ultimate Yoga. That is the yoga. yoga. Now this great teaching, when Buddha gave that teaching, of course you heard so many times, and I also said many times, I heard that teaching. But again, if we say that, that, Buddha gave this teaching, the greatest teacher, Buddha Chakyamuni gave this teaching in the form of the Buddha Samadha Bhadra. Buddha summoned but therefore in the teaching says there is nothing higher and a better teacher than the Samana Buddha. The Buddha teacher is the Samana Buddha. Where he gave the teaching, this Buddha gave the teaching in the pure land of Akanishta, beyond pure land that beyond the dualities, graspings, beyond, not just the pure, beyond the duality. That pure land, pure land, to whom the self-displayed wisdom emanation, such as the five Dhyana Buddha, Vajrasattva, Vajradharas, Buddha gave that teaching. They are no other than the Buddha Samana Buddha. Same realization, same state, same display, self-displayed primordial wisdom. Also the teaching mentioned, self -display. How he gave that teaching? Without the war, without the lab of unborn primordial wisdom status, expanded the whole entire teaching to the rational of the primordial, those in self emanated wisdom, completely as unborn voice. That, that Buddha gave that teaching. And who gathered all that teaching? Who recorded that teaching? Again, in the other teaching mentioned, and I am in the teaching said, the other teaching, I am the teacher, I am the uh, uh, who collected the teaching, or who gathered the teaching, who gathered the teaching. The one who gathered or Dopa, he's a gathering. Gathering or who connected. So who gathered this teaching? Vajir Dara and Vajir Sato gathered or collected. So all teachings are completely pervasive and vibrating pervasive nature in a Dharma Dhatu state of the pure land. And then when the time comes, according to the teaching, around maybe 28 years after Buddha's Mahapari Nirvana, then when the time is ready to come to this world, and the great master, Garab Dordi, 
who is the emanation of the Buddha Vajra Sattvas of very high enlightened beings, enlightened beings, who emanated specifically to bring and to bring the Dzogchi teaching. Okay, in the Odianas, that in the, is it about 28 years after the Buddha Shakyamuni Mahaparinirvana. And then he gathered the entire Dzogchi teaching as who gave it Vedic, Vedic Sattvas. In the teaching, it says there's a different his story. That one time, I mean, I mean this long, many lot of stories, I'm sure many of you already know, and I'm not going to talk all those things. But one time he was young and about seven years old, he disappeared for quite a while. And then, and they all worried, concerned, and when he come back, then he reappeared. When he reappeared, he said, that whatever the Buddha Vajrasattva knows, I know everything. I know. Buddha Vajrasattva. So Vajrasattva gave every teaching to him. Empowerment, transmission, and instruction, entirely Dzogchi teaching handed it to the to the uh, to the Garab Dorjis. And the Garab Dorji become the sole lineage holder of the Dzogchi teaching, entire teaching in that time, human world. And then Dzogchi teaching, according to teaching, three times, th under third generation, Dzogchi teaching become the single lineage. Garab Dorji is transmitted to Menjushiri Matara, Menjushiri Matara, Matanda Media to the Shiri Sima. Those are three lineages, and the teaching say that. And they have, they have many students, but Zoki teaching only transmitted to the, to the, to the three, three single lineages, one after another. And then Gagarab Dorji all gathered 6,400 thousand Zoki teaching, and the teaching say that. <coughs> he collected that Zoki teaching. And then Menjishiri Matar, his foremost student, divided that Dzogchi teaching into three sections. Mind section, space section, and peace and stuff sections. And that is Dzogchi teaching. He collected it that way. And then he is uh, that this mind section, space, mind section of the Dzogchi teaching, space section of the Dzogchi teaching, Pit and Stocking sections of the Zoki teaching, that Pit and Stocking section of the Zoki teaching, Garab Dorji, sorry, Kiri Singha divided into four different. Those are, I mean, re renowned Alkal, Inan, Sigrid, Demos, and Sigrid. <coughs> and this Demos is Sigrid, also he divided into four groups. <coughs> Outer, No, no, I think I'm, I'm sorry. That he divided that third one, the pit and structure section, divided into three, four, and outer, inner, and secret, the most secret one. And so now, this, our practice, what we practice, this Dokki teaching, is the, the most secret one. So that, that means the most accurate, it's the ultimate teaching of the Buddha, that, as ordinary ultimate teaching, that is secret. That teaching as it is, has a two, two steps to practice. Those are that you all know, no? True, true teaching and a Kogal teaching. True divided into two teaching. Both are na teaching on the nature of the mind. One's, one's own nature of the mind teaching. So that is what really, how that. And that teaching came to Tibet then in the 8th century by King Kasong time, and Gurupa Masambhava, great master of Bhavana Matara, bought these the, as the most the essential teachings of the, of the Dzogchi teaching. At the same time, great translator Verojana also went to India and received the teaching from, directly from Shri Sangha, as well as from Garab Dorji, was the body of the Garab Dorji, and in Shri Sangha he received the teaching and brought back those out of the same day. Mind section of teaching, pit and structure section of teaching, he brought back and spread it out in the teaching. And there they also stand on board, together with that, those are called eating different mind section of the uh, same day teachings, as well as the Lundi, 
uh, long dictating. There's three groups of the long dictating, which is known as the, the white groups of long dictating, black groups of the long dictating, and the striped groups of the long dictating. Those are the teaching mentioned. So three different sections of the long dictating that is important. But the faith and structure such as teaching is only taught by the great master Bhavan Madara and Gaurapya Masambhava to selected groups. That teaching becomes, I mean, that this all teachings are now existing and were widely practiced. Particularly, the faith and structure such as teaching that Gaurapya Masambhava and the Bhavan Madara teaching is a kind of small. That is, I mean, generally the whole Dokki teaching is really completely kind of glorified, more clarified by the great master Lung Chimpa. Lung Chimpa who came in the 13th century, around the 13th century time, and born, and he was the, the I mean, known as one of the great Dokki masters. All the time, even many history, many great masters mentioned Garab Dorji of Tibet. Garab Dorji of India is in India, but Lamkiba is a Garab Dorji of Tibet that he really bought. He put some, all Dokki teachings kind of completely clarified, particularly the two lineage of the Jinfek lineage. Even though it's the same, the two lineage that comes from Gurupe Masamba and from Mal Madara, he put together in those so called seven four groups of the Jinfek teachings and all that. He made the commentary, all that. So that is how they really about that. So what are all these now teaching, this entirely Zoki teaching by Nkipa and the two Gurpema uh, Sambhava uh, teachings, teachings and Mavala Madara teachings is the Zoki teaching. So now part of that is a kind of ex general explanation of the Zoki, Zoki history or how it started in Tibet. But now how we could practice this Zoki teaching? How we practice this? Here said, said here, to essence of the Rupa, the actualize the inside and the primordial wisdoms. Generally, we have the primordial wisdoms right here, right here, with you and with me, everyone. That's the according to the teaching of the Buddha and Gurupa and Masamba, everyone. But how we actualize that, how we make that see clearly that we can. Why we don't see clearly that? We mentioned so. I mentioned many times, and you know, the obscurations, the habit pattern, habit pattern, obscurations, that is very, very heavy and thick, that completely blocked, blocked, blocked it, and don't see that, that clearly. So how we discover that? That is then following the path of the Zokhi, path of the Zokhi. Now to do that, in the Zoki teaching, in the highest teaching, we, I mentioned so many times, is called instantly teaching. That instantly get realization, realization. But however, even though teaching is an instantly technique, yet our hard head, the duality, cannot break through easily, easily. Therefore, we have to follow the gradually, gradually, gradual path we have to follow. For that reason, we started practices such as Mundo practice or take the refuge, take the refuge to the Buddha Dharma Sangha. And then refuge is the foundation. Then develop the body capacity. And then along with that, four renunciation thoughts. Those are so important because those will to softening our duality, regiment, clinging, attachment to the samsara or to our self self-important attitude. It really will loosen up. Often we heard, bless me to mature my mind. What means mature mind? What our mind is not mature? And that indicates indirectly is not mature, it's hard head. Even though it may be delicious apple, but it's not mature. Or maybe it's delicious banana, but it's not mature. Because why? Grasping, clinging, negative emotions. All of that, we have to soften up that. Not instant we can soften up, instant we can do. Even the Dokya teaching is the most powerful, so direct the teaching, but yet our duality conceptions, so strong. 
and our those obstacles I listed the other day, five obstacles or five robbers are so strong. They really always attacking us. Even in a, in a teaching, said even you are highly realized, quite good progress in the past, still they can attack you. This that the five five pose and the five these robbers is not just a short time robbers. This is going to rob ourselves for a long time. Therefore, we practice, you know, always should be watchful, careful to ourselves that we are not trapped within that. Again, back to that. Even the big, good, highly accomplishment, there's so many stories, highly accomplishment, trapped and fell down, fell down. Really, there's so many stories. Story. So therefore, we have to be hard, strong, and a detergent, determined, diligent, and a determination. And the courage is one. Courage is one. Courage is one, and practice. Receive the teaching, empowerment. Practice that with joyful effort, with the devotion, joy, and appreciation. And very humble and simple, drawn to the earth, and practice meditate. Then, Gradually, we're going to reveal our nature, our nature of this Buddha nature. Gradually, as I said the other day, in the teaching said, then gradually we become more bright, more bright, more clay, more clay, then we become the really good practitioner, good practitioner. But still, watchful with all the obstacles, with mindfulness, alertness, and consciousness. Then. Also, when that happened, what happened, a sign of the realization in the teaching mentioned, your wisdom is well, more growing, more love and compassion is more growing, more your more patience and tolerance is more coming more growing, more stronger and stronger. Those are the signs of the achievement and the realization. realization. And you become more mellow, not so tense, more loosened of ourselves. That and those all. Then those are the signs of the achievement is like this actualized in insight. Then really began to see that. Truly nature. And then then continually discovering the wind is come on the wisdom. So the discrimination, awareness, wisdom, or the wisdom of the intelligent wisdom when the task formed, formed gradually to become stronger and stronger, and then become the wisdom. So here's the Primordial wisdom. You discover the primordial wisdom. The primordial wisdom is the inherent the nature of the, our own self. We have, I think we mentioned the other day, we went through it, and I'm sure you know many in the teaching, but primordial wisdom is five kinds, all are within the, our Buddha nature, within the Dzogchen nature, within the Tathangarbha status. So that nature, then we discover all that gradually, one after another, another we reach a highly enlightenment. Or in the Dokki teaching said, when you see the nature according to Dokki level, first when you continue to meditate and receive practice with the devotion and strong, with, uh, with the devotion and joy and appreciation, then we get the realization of the seeing the true nature exactly as it is. But at the time, our understanding of the true nature of the nature of the mind is, even though nature is always in the us, even though Buddha introduced the pointing out the teaching, we go through, through, but still we kind of there's a well blocking really the, to see the true nature exactly as it is. Because most of the time we believe to see true nature something that kind of like some colorful or something that which I can rely on. Or I can rely on, I can see, I can feel that. That's what we really think always. Always think. So then it kind of like, but then nature is, if I can feel something, that means you're trying to realize that you put it in, you, we're trying to put the realization trapped in, in conceptions. Realization is not conception according to teaching. It's not the, not the, like thought, the conception, trying to trap that. Realization is free from the conception. So nature is the, that. So that we really, many times we don't see, but however, even though that we see kind of at the beginning of time, intellectually maybe we understand. Those are known as the intellectual views. 
in the way the teaching said, you the thought, view of the, the <coughs> analytic, and when you analytically you understand. Then that when you come with that, that is use that as a stepping stone, continually meditate in the practice, then we go beyond of that analytic views, then you dis well, discover the exactly nature as it is. And that is a self view of the one's own awareness. Radhikatava in its way, Radhikatava. Self view of the one's own awareness mind. That is the perfect view according to the teaching. Perfect view. And that see that exactly as it is known as the stage of the seeing true nature exactly as it is. Then we continue to expand, is getting stronger and stronger, then expanding the realization stage. Also, Chuni wants us to but experience is increased. And then reaching the peak of the awareness. That means we got to understand the perfect meaning of Tao, everything really see. Most of the medalla of the three kayas, as we heard so many times, but now you begin to see our own self, the naked state. And then beyond the fourth state is known as the, the ultimate state of true, true nature. 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 So those are the four stages of the Zoki. You know, common practices, the winning practices, Tiku practices, or Togal practices, those are the teachings said. So that time, then definitely we dis discovered all the five wisdoms. And these five wisdoms, the five the, the guys are in the reality, in the state here, is the Buddha summoned the Buddha, is free from the abandoned attachment. Because it is, this is the Buddha, what we discover is not something that newly arrived, newly happened. It is the origin in the nature that we discover. They discover, therefore, it is beyond, beyond of the, of the, beyond the abandoning or beyond the, something that we're going to lose it and regain. No, it's always been there. That we're not, not gaining anything. For that reason, in Buddha, teaching of the heart sutra, there is a uh, uh, by me, mahtu by me. There's nothing to gain, nothing to lose. Some, in the heart sutra, you have maybe better uh, translations. Nothing gain, nothing to lose. This is origin in any in, in nature as it is. It is origin. But however, in the duality conception, we lost it. Because myths of our own duality, we lost it. So now we have to regain back. Just discover that. that. And that, the, that is, that is the origin of the Samana Bhadra. The Samana Bhadra, is another synonym of the Tathagata Garbha. Mm -hmm. Samadha Bhadra, Tathagata Garbha, oh, it is like, uh, uh, I mean, origin nature. How is this Buddha Samadha Bhadra? The great master, Chandra, not Chandra Kirti, Dharma Kirti, said, you know, his, his great uh, logic, logician teaching, logic teaching, reason teaching, and he said, this Dharma, some of the but this some of the Bhadar is free from all the nets of the conceptions of whatever. Uh, free from the nets of the conceptions, net N E T, uh, the net of conception. And it has a profound me of the profound qualities of the of the kayas and the wisdoms. And emanating the beneficial light to every direction without any partialities. And that is And to I I pay homage to that summoned Bhadra. To that one summoned Bhadra. This great master logician, logician, and who is the one of the leading master of the of the mind only school. He said that in the teaching. So that is called the, the origin of <coughs> some of the Buddha. The our ever own awareness teaching. Generally there is true, many in according. <coughs> many uh, in the Zoki, Zoki teaching. In, uh, in the Zoki teaching there is like uh, pre divisions of some of the Buddha. There is a first summoned brother is called first Buddha. 
Salman brother. This is the original Buddha. First Buddha ever. That is the Buddha. But then, the self-awareness of Salman brother, that is what is pointing out here. One's own nature, the innate nature of the mind is self-awareness <coughs> Salman brother. That is Salman brother is. And when you got that realization, when you discover, discover that, then the samsara is Samana Bhadra, and the Nirvana is Samana Bhadra, or samsara is Dokwa Chembo, Nirvana is Dokwa Chembo, and past is Dokwa Chembo. Dokwa Chembo. There is everything is a Dokhi state, and there's nothing is not outside or outside the Dokhi. All is in the Dokhi state. Dokhi state. That was for that reason. In a great, great master Umkhima said, you know, in his teaching, said that appearance in the Samana Bhadra, emptiness in the Samana Bhadra, and the happiness in the Samana Bhadra, suffering in the Samana Bhadra. Samana, Samana Bhadra, Nama Kondasa, And within the state of the Kondasa, there is no death and birth. And all is perfect display of the primordial wisdom. Nothing. The death and the birth is the notion of the conception and the duality. The reality is never, is all displaced. <coughs> and for that reason, the every in the now this all is summoned by the states. 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 So therefore, therefore, that is called pathodoxy. Pathodoxy. Because when we don't have the realization of exactly as it is, then we follow in the path exactly with the instructions, start with the refuge in the bodhicitta, in the four renounces and so forth, all those beautiful thoughts in the practice of meditating, exactly as the teaching instructed, and then it's called the path zokhi, that is the saving. And, and then we go to the next one. And the next one is you took me there, Lomasas. And all the 